Happy Reformation Day. We will start our service with hymn 229, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Please rise as you are able. are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Most merciful Father, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. With a peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors, when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or, shall, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, for the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. Please join me reading responsibly from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. <coughs> the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. 
There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall have all her and bring in the The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord, what awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes the Lord to the of all the world. He wears his eye and shatters his spear and burns his shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith, apart from works, prescribed by the law. Here ends this reading. disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Here is the gospel lesson for this morning. You may be seated. Well, this is our time that we usually spend with Parsley. Parsley's friends. So I'm going to rearrange the furniture this morning for a bit. Parsley has a friend and a kind of a problem is puzzling him this morning. You remember our spotted friend, don't you? Wow, he's looking over the Bible and trying to understand the scripture for today. And now along comes Parsley. So what you doing? What you reading? I'm trying to figure out what the gospel lesson for today means. When Jesus says that, well, we should, you know, we are his disciples. 
What do you think that means? And what does it mean about being made free? I'm free. I don't have anyone looking over me. I kind of roam the neighborhood. So I need to understand. Well, it's a lesson that we can all understand. Let's ask Pastor Marlene what she thinks. Well, hi, guys. I'm glad to see you all today. Hi, Parsley. Well, I think Jesus is talking about following his, being his disciples is very important to us. Because what that means is that we need to love one another and care for one another. We need to befriend one another. And we need to help one another in our daily duties and to follow the teachings of Jesus. Because if we look at the Bible lesson, here's Spotty, let me pull it out. The Bible lesson says that they're descendants of Abraham. But Jesus says, if you're truly my disciple, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So that means that if you are with the Son, the Son will make it free. And what does that mean? Jesus is the Son of God. And we need to trust in God in all things. And God will help us get through the day. So in being his disciples, possibly we need to think about maybe some of those dogs that we don't like to associate with in the neighborhood and make them friends. We can be kind to them. And for us humans, we can be kind to people. Maybe for children who go to school, we can share our toys, or we can help make new friends. So we share the love of God in many ways. So if we are Christ's disciples, we need to follow Christ's teachings. Jesus, who died on the cross, has made us free from all sin if we truly forgive and ask God to forgive us for the wrong we have done. So Jesus is the one who sets us free. Does that kind of help? Yeah, a little bit. So I can go make friends with the new dogs in the neighborhood? That would be a good idea. And all the boys and girls can make new friends at school, too. And they can help one another. So let us pray. How about a parsley? Lord, help us to be your disciples. We know that the sacrifice and your death on the cross and your glorious resurrection has made us free from sin. Help us to share the good news with our friends and all we meet, to know that they truly are loved by you. Amen. For all those who were driving in this morning, I don't know if you saw the beauty of the sun rising, just kind of laying on the beautiful colored trees. It was an awesome sight again today as we get near the end of the fall colors. But it reminded me of something that I experienced many years ago. I had an opportunity to visit one of the national forests in California to see the tall redwood trees. They're an awesome sight. As I stood at the base of these trees, I had a new appreciation for the expression, you can't see the forest for the trees, because they're so tall. According to the National Park Service, California redwoods can grow over 360 feet high. I'd hate to cut those branches. 600 to 2,000 years old, and they can be as wide as 22 feet at the base of the tree. Well, what's really amazing is that seeds from these trees can be as small as a tomato seed. And I thought about the significance of the seeds of faith in commemoration of the Protestant Reformation today. And it reminded me of the faith of Martin Luther, the founder of our faith. Luther began with a small seed of faith, searching for an understanding of salvation through the scriptures. And his discovery led his faith to sprout and grow, and then it became like a large redwood tree, resulting in the Protestant Reformation. His faith forever changed the world. Romans 4.16 reminds us, for this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace, and be guaranteed to all descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. Luther realized what scripture was saying about salvation, that faith comes through God's gift of grace, through the death and resurrection of the Son, Jesus Christ, not by fearing God, and certainly not by buying or selling indulgences, which was the system at that time of the medieval church. 
We can't earn it or buy it either by good works. It's God's gift to us. Ephesians 2 says, For by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for his good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So on October 31st, Martin Luther, who was a German monk, posted the 95 Thesis on the chapel door of the University of Wittenberg, seeking discussion or debate. His writing was a critique of the church's practice of indulgences at that time, and he was later ordered to withdraw his opinions. But Luther stood tall. He had great faith, and he refused to cave in. As a result, he was excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church. There's another mark in history that we observe today with Martin Luther. 500 years ago today, Luther translated the New Testament from the original Greek language into common language that the average German person could read and understand. The people only heard parts of the Bible from their priest who used a fourth century translation known as the Latin Vulgate. One of the authors, A.J. Jones, wrote that the Latin version had absorbed all kinds of revisions over the years. So Luther wanted to go back to the original text and to translate from original sources. So he did a literal Greek translation of each verse, and then he took common German words or synonyms so people could understand the scriptures. The New Testament printed in the German language during the Reformation changed the way that people had access to the word of God from the 16th century down to you today. Even though the world changes, there's one promise we can still count on. Jesus Christ remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Luther also made a contribution, as we know, to music. We sang one of his hymns this morning, probably the most famous, A Mighty Fortress. It was written in the late 1520s and has been translated more times than any other hymn in church history. Luther had great faith in God and in the scriptures. His life work was the result of how faith can change lives. He didn't set out to establish a split in the church. He wanted Christians to follow the word of God. His was a life where we see faith growing from a tiny seed into a movement that changed the world. Matthew 17, Jesus says, For truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a tiny mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. The Gospel lesson today reminds us that as disciples of Jesus, we need to continue in the Word. As we study the scriptures, we continue to build a living relationship with God. Knowing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, makes us free from our sins, and we try to follow Christ's teaching, is the message today. Three years after posting the 95 Thesis on the church door, Martin Luther wrote a document called The Freedom of a Christian and what it means to be free in Jesus. Let me share a couple points about faith that he wrote in this document. Luther points out that the word of God, the scriptures, are what makes one rich. As God's word brings life, truth, light, peace, righteousness, salvation, joy, liberty, wisdom, power, grace, glory, and every other blessing imaginable. One author says that Luther sees the word as powerful because it refers to Jesus Christ and the preaching of Christ's death and resurrection that creates the faith to listeners. Jesus reminds us that I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Luther says in his writing that Christ was given to the world for no other ministry than the word. The gospel concerns Jesus who made flesh, who was made flesh, who suffered and rose from the dead and was glorified through the spirit that makes us holy, unquote. Luther quotes the Apostle Paul in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
Christ is the end of the law, says Romans 10, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Luther said the word of God cannot be received or honored by any works, but must be grasped by faith. It is justified by faith alone and not by works. So there are three points of faith that Luther talks about. Faith frees us from the law. Since the promises of God are holy, true, righteous, and free, the soul clings to them with a firm faith. If the touch of Christ healed, he says, how much more will this most tender spiritual touch communicate to the soul all things that belong to the word? Faith honors God is the second point, as it trusts with the most reverence and highest regard. Our faith trusts in the promises of God, seeing and trusting God as truthful. And the third point, he says, is faith unites the soul with Jesus Christ. The soul becomes one with Jesus. We belong to Christ. All who trust Christ are what Luther calls priests in the kings in Christ. And according to 1 Peter, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Here is where we realize what the gospel is saying to say today. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Through our faith, Jesus Christ claims us and makes us free. John 14 reminds us when we trust fully in Jesus and follow his word, we are his disciples. Jesus loves each and every one of you so very much that he died on the cross, gave his life for your sins, freed us, transforming us into new creatures. It's a gift that God gives us through grace. And it's one of those gifts, like the expression says, that just keeps on giving and giving and giving. The Lutheran Study Bible reminds us in Luther's small catechism, there's a guide for reading scripture. God's word does something to us by putting the old creature to death with our guilt and shame and making us a new creature, giving us new life. So the word can be described, as Luther says, as the book of faith. The Holy Spirit works through God's word, bringing us all to faith in Jesus. Our Lord is calling us to do great things in faith on this Reformation Sunday, to help one another. The book continues that the Reformation, that there are changes in our personal faith as we remember the words of Jesus today. Truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these he will do, because I am going to the Father. Martin Luther did great works for our life, and now it's us to up, up to us to carry on those great works in our community and in our church with the hope and the promise of God's grace and faith. We will sing the hymn of the day, which is 320. Thank you, 320. Yes, 320. And let's sing all the verses. The short, all the verses. Okay. Sing we're gonna because I tend to get lost when I'm doing We're going to sing all the verses. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. Rise as you are able.
Let us recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born to the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on our hearts and all your people, that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Merciful God. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth. Bring new life to overused land and contaminated rivers. Reform and reorient our environment, that we faithfully care for all of your creation. Merciful God. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for all nations. Where there is an uproar, bring wise leadership. Comfort those in distress, especially the people of the Ukraine. Make wars cease. Bring peace to every land. Merciful God. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for all those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter those without homes. Calm all who are facing illness, surgery, or a new diagnosis. Bless all of those on our prayer list, those we name out loud, and those in our hearts. Jesse, Pat, Judy. Merciful God. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Bless all who are present here and help us to open our hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach us your word and lead us in the direction that you want us to go. Help us to encourage and to proclaim our faith. Merciful God. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for all who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all reformers. Renew and reform us now as we strive to continue in your word. Merciful God. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God be with you always. You. you may share the peace with one another. We'll continue our service by taking the morning offer.
pray together the prayer in unison. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that the Lord has taught us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll close our service with hymn number 369. 